uh, Mark and Nicole uh, Hoff in uh, Australia has invited us to to do a, a one there in October. So I am flying out to, to uh, uh, Down Under in October. So if anybody wants to go, just let me know. What time of year will it be there? Summer. Summer? Yeah. It's hot. They told me it's hot. Summer. Here, October. October here. October here so it's yeah. winter. It's it's summer, it's summer there. there. Yes, it's, it's hot. Right. They told me it's hot. It's spring. It's spring. Yeah. Oh, it's coming up. Yeah. Spring. So anyway, with that said, we're gonna. Oh, come on in, brother. Where's your wife? Okay. Well, pull up a chair or find your space over here, uh, uh, Dwight. You might want to tighten that up, brother. Yeah, you are kind of sprawl out there. more place to get in. <clears throat> Okay, well, Dwight, will you pray for us as we start, brother? Well, Father, we just truly thank you for all that you're doing in our lives. And Father, we just want to seek you in a greater way than we've ever sought you before. And Father, through this uh, Sonship and Identification Conference, we pray that you just uh, lead and guide by your Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to guide us into all truth, mm -hmm. the greater truth, and the more reality of knowing you. Mm -hmm. And Father, we just thank you for all that you're doing in our lives right now. And we just give ourselves open to you to mm -hmm. do more and uh, yield ourselves to you and your spirit. And thank you for all you're going to do. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, with all of the conferences we've done, we start this. The Father gave us this. We're going to stick with it till he changes it or exchange it, exchange it for something else. We start on Friday with a what we call walk on the pier. Now, both of you have been with us for a while. You know walk on the pier is something we... Am I on, Jim? Yeah, okay. We walk on the pier on Sunday after we do fellowship, and we have a great time. The walk on the pier is something kind of unique and special. The walk on the pier is, is outside the rails. People ask anything. You can say anything. Uh, there, there is therefore now no condemnation. In sonship. So uh, I don't need to be right, which means you don't need to be wrong. Uh, there is, if, if what you're talking about is where you are, that's good. I'm not the basis for your identity. Neither am I the basis for your revelation knowledge. The Father has given you that. I said this a couple of Sundays ago on Walk on the Pier. None of you belong to me. You belong to your Father. So I'm not, I don't get into that. Well, our people love to have you uh, fellowship with us, but you don't belong to me. You belong to the Father. And when you say something, that's between you and your daddy. Okay? That's between you and your daddy. Now, I might say a word or two. Ask Curtis. <laughs> a few. I might say a word or two here and there. He'll say a few. <laughs> He'll say a few. Uh, so... Walk on the pier is open to anything you want to say. Nothing's dumb, nothing's stupid, nothing outside, nothing's crazy. Oh, look, we got Nicole with us. Hey, sis. Nicole is in Australia. Mark should be there. I think, is he still there, Jimmy? Jim? Mark, uh, her husband, Mark, is there, but you can't see him. He's the invisible brother. <laughs> He's the undercover brother. <laughs> so... Let me say uh, our dear brother and sister, uh, Lopez and Monica, are from England. You've seen them on the screen. Now you see them in person. This is their second trip with us this year. They flew in from England. Their arms got tired, but they, they kept going. They kept flying anyway. <laughs> oh, wave so they can see you. There you go. They are from England. And Nicole is from, from, from Australia. And Jimmy came all the way in from, from Oregon. Jimmy is from Oregon. Seattle, Oregon. Seattle, Oregon. You want to wave, Jimmy? Yeah, let, there you go. Seattle, Portland. Seattle, Seattle, Portland. <laughs> so we've got, we've got and uh, uh, Patricia really, is, she's been here for a while, though. But Patricia is from California at one time. Yeah, she's, she's, she's living here now. Yes, okay, well, that's okay, baby. She, sooner or later, she'll catch up. I mean, she's asking for the link. So. 
I check, tell her check the email. I sent it to her. Okay. Beverly Gray, right? Brenda. Brenda Gray, I mean. Yes. Yeah, Brenda Gray. I sent it to her already. Okay. So, with any, it, with any further ado, uh, the Father has given us uh, Jackie and, and, and Dwight Davis. You guys have seen Dwight. Dwight has taught, and he will continue to teach as the Father gave him an utterance, and he has not failed to give that brother an utterance. <laughs> utter. I know. Utter. Yeah. <laughs> that door has never closed. And Paul said, "Give open the door of utterance." This door, he took, he took, well, he took thing, it off. He this, took the hinges off. He took the calling to have repentance. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I really believe, and I don't use that term at all. When the last time you heard me say that? Uh, five seconds ago. I believe. <laughs> oh, okay. I don't use that term at all. But uh, I sense this is going to be a great time. Uh, not because of the number of people that show up, but because this is the body. Mm -hmm. And the body is constituted by, what, two or three? It's the same body of Christ that's down the street in the building with 2,000. Christ is not any bigger or any smaller based on the number of people. Amen. So this is the body of Christ that meets in this place. Now, you might have one you go to that meets in another place. But this is the body of Christ that meets in this place. And we thank the Father for that. Oh, I forgot uh, two more here. Uh, you all know Curtis and, and Jenny and, of course, Jim and Sylvia. But we have new faces, a long time no see faces. We got our daughter, Amber, who is, who is blessed. She's blessed. She's blessed. <laughs> but she is expecting her first, uh, our grandson, and her husband, Martin, who got her that way. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> and it's a boy. It, it, did I tell you it's a boy? His name is Zayden. Wait for it. Wait for it. David. David. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Vera. <laughs> so, with that said, I guess after that prayer we prayed and all the introductions, we can really get started with Walk on the Pier. So, <clears throat> I won't start. I try to like to let you guys start. I know that I got an email from Mark, and he said he has several questions he wanted to ask. So, Mark, uh, anytime you want to jump in and ask the questions, if you got time, if you, because uh, Mark is at work. So he's listening, but it, he's not on the screen, but he's listening. He can see us. We can't see him. He can hear us, and when he speaks, we will be able to hear him. So he said he has several questions he wanted to ask. So I'll wait on him to jump in if he can. If not, anybody else got any questions or any comments on what you're seeing in the message and the process of sonship? Remember this. Christ in you is the hope of glory. But the hope of glory to, not to what, but to who? Christ in you makes you someone. And that's something that the Father has given us quite some time now. You can say, Christ lives in me all you want. But who are you? There is not a child, this child is in, in Amber's womb, got there by two. That's union. But that union has to become how many? to be another person. That person that God put Christ in us as, the spirit of Christ comes in the spirit of man and you become, as Paul said in 1 Corinthians 6, 17, one spirit. One spirit. Who is that spirit we become? It's not Christ. They only got one of them. It's not Jesus. Who is it? He died. And Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 5, 6, 17, 5, 16, what? We know so who is it that we become? The only person that we are to the God the Father is the Son. Not male, not female, not black, not white, not Italian, not German. We're that person spiritually to him. The issue is what gets in the way of that is our personal identity in the flesh. 
We've grown up in our personal identity, our little square, little box, our little, you, what they call it, Jenny, when you have this, uh, what, what, what kind of box life living? No, but I'm calling that little, what do, you, what do you have when you have your little zone around you? Personal space. Personal space. <laughs> <laughs> personal space. <laughs> See, I knew she'd come up. Personal space is created by personal identity. So personal identity comes from personal space that you were biologically. So in your personal space, if you know that you're born again and Jesus lives in you, you still have personal space that you've added Christ to. And you remember back years ago, I can point at Dwight because I know he was back there years ago. And so would you. You remember when they were talking years ago you might, some of you might remember this. <clears throat> In evangelical teaching, 25, 30 years ago, they were saying, it's Jesus plus nothing. Not Christ plus baptism. Not Christ plus works. Not Christ plus tithing. You remember that? Not Christ plus church attendance. You remember that? You remember those? You remember that? Oh, yeah. I see, see, I got these amen brothers over here. <laughs> this was never Christ plus anything. And it's amazing to me. Religion has, has, has put a foot on the neck of that lie, and they've gone to the second place and saying, Christ plus me. Is it Christ plus you? Is it Christ plus you? The creature. Uh, so, uh, what'd you say? The creature of Christ Jesus. So if it's new, how can it be Christ plus? Right. That's for salvation. <clears throat> And they, they, they forgot about the it. problem, and well, then forget. I don't, I don't see that we've come to the place to let the Holy Spirit move us yeah, on. You're right. the, the gospel is progressive. The gospel is on. Warren used to say that all the time. He said it's ongoing. Now he and I had a conversation about that several years ago. I said, "What do you mean when you say ongoing?" Well, he gave me what he said it meant to him. It, for me, it was something different. For me, ongoing is the Holy Spirit continually teaching us who we are in Christ as, listen, as the person we are spiritually to the Father. Now, I said, I didn't say the Son. I said the person we are spiritually to the Father. But who is that person? Is it Patricia? Mm -mm. Is it Lopez? No. Is it Dwight? No. Why? Because no flush of glory in his presence. So that tells us your personal identity is not an issue. It's the spiritual identity that we have by spiritual birth. I'm thinking even in Revelation that we're going to have a new name in heaven. Uh, Revelation chapter 2, I think verse 22. Yeah, and so, a new name you know, white stone is <laughs> that no man knows but him that gave it. Gave it. Now, I don't want to, I want to, I want to go there because I'm saving that one for my message on okay. Sunday. Okay. <laughs> I'm saving that. Okay. I'm saving it. Don't, okay. don't steal that okay. from me. No, it's not my message. I so our issue becomes that it's okay to say Christ in me. It's okay. I'm not saying that's wrong. If that's where you are, stick with it. I'm not going to tell you that's wrong. That would be a lie on my part because you can't go to a first grader who doesn't know algebra and tell them they're wrong because they can't work an algebra problem. Because they haven't been taught. So I can't tell you if you're saying Christ in me, well, that's wrong. No, it's where they are. It's where you are. I almost said Brenda. You've been calling your sister before, huh? It's okay, Patricia. That's okay. It's okay, Monica. Why? Because that's where you are. But the message of Christ is sonship. And if you are not allowed the Holy Spirit, as Warren would say, the right, the right to reveal who you are to him spiritually, and I say that because that's what the Bible tells. John tells us in 1 John chapter 5, verse 11, he that has the Son has life. He that does not have the Son of God has not life. So who 
are you if the son is the life and the son give you? What life do you have? Well, you say, well, this is the life of Christ. It's not what that says. Christ in you makes you someone spiritually to God the Father. Unfortunately, because Satan and man-made religion <clears throat> have come together to try to tell us who we are, they created what this brother saw two years ago as a two-person gospel. You want to take over now? It's your turn. <laughs> You're on a roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me some butter. This, 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 is, this is a genie roll here. But you, 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 we have the two-person gospel. The two-person gospel keeps all of us if you're watching and you're in the two-person gospel, is you plus Christ. Yes, Dwight. What I'm really seeing through all this, we don't really want to give up our self. Oh, shut my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's the pride in all of that, and that's why we can't move forward. Because after all, then I, I can't be myself. Ooh, shut your mouth. <laughs> And so uh, it's hard for me in my mind because I, I don't think like that and I don't feel that way. Oh, good. I'm glad you don't. Do you see what he's saying? I don't feel that. That's exactly That's what's, what's happening. Going on. That's what's happening. I call that at where I am, not what Dwight gave you where, where he is and what he sees, because he said, this is what I'm seeing in that. That's, that's, that's excellent because he needs to be there for realization to take place in him. He prayed that in his prayer. Did you, I heard what he said about realization. Yeah. When realization happens, understanding follows. Yes. Let me say it again. Knowledge needs to be realized so understanding can follow. If understanding doesn't follow, realization doesn't happen, then you're still stuck in who you are in your personal identity, in your personal space. And listen to me very carefully. He said pride. I don't see pride. What I see is fear. Fear drives personal space. When somebody tells you you're in my space, you're hearing something. So personal space is produced by personal identity, which means you are the person you perceive yourself to be from this high to where you are now. If you were five and you understood your personal space, your personal identity, if you were five when you understand personal identity, that's when personal space was created. If you were six and personal, personal identity was, 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 was revealed or you realized personal, personal identity, then you had personal space. It has never left you. If you grew up being in personal identity an introvert, guess what? Your personal space is being an introvert. If you were a, quote, extrovert, and you understood that, you realized that, that's when it was created. That's when you became a prisoner of yourself in the flesh. Right. You, you, were, you were taken captive. You are now, you are now delusional because no one can tell you that's not who you are. You will add Jesus to that, You'll add the two-person gospel. That's the little things over there. You'll add Jesus to that. And Jesus will decrease. I mean, you will decrease <laughs> so that Jesus can increase. And yes, it's just the option in the world. That's it. Thank you. This is, this is the two-person gospel. This is me and Jesus. This is me and Jesus. The blue is Jesus and the red is me. And we'll do everything we can to decrease Jesus, I mean to decrease me so that Jesus can increase. John what? John what? John what? Two? But it says he must increase. Right. I must decrease. I right. He must increase. But he you know what? I can put some more water in this <laughs> and add more blue to it and the blue will get larger and the red will get smaller. But you know what? The red will still be there. It needs to be these two. How many colors do you see in this? Do you know this was red and blue at one time? This, is a new, this has been an exchange of identity. So I want to talk a little bit then, or hear what your input is. I want to talk about one, personal identity. Now, let me say something very careful. 
going to talk about this Sunday, but I can, I can go some of it tonight. <laughs> Personal identity has two expressions. Jesus said that. Did you know Jesus dealt with two identities? What about that? What do you think? He said, the son of man and the son of God. This is the son of man. What you can't see is the son of God until he lives in. So your personal identity can be who you are spiritually. When that happens, that's an exchange. I was telling uh, Monica today, there was a time that, man, I used to, have pretty, I used to use some pretty, some, some pretty uh, words back in the day before when I was younger. I'd cuss you out in a minute. Now, boom, you have four or five words. I used to hurt, if I hit my hand, I said, I, I can't use those words today. Even some of them are biblical, but I can't use them. <laughs> I, would, I would cuss, man. I hit my hand, it hurts, and you say some things. But I remember when my mind began to be renewed, I came to the realization who I was. I remember the first time I hit my hand with a hammer. And I said, oh, Father God. Man, I said, that was dumb, wasn't it? My, my dialogue was between here. My dialogue was like this. Oh, man, that was dumb, Father. Oh. And the Spirit said to me, did you hear what you said? I said, yeah. A few years ago, we were in, in Kerrville with, with, we went to visit Catherine's parents, and Amber was there. We were all in the minivan. We were driving, and the back hatch was open. I got out of the car. At least I think you were there. I got out of the van, and I, and I ran around. It was at a stoplight, so I was in a hurry. I ran around to the back of the car, and I put my hand on the top of the hatch, and I put this hand right here. Guess where this hand was? When I slammed that thing down, my hand was in that door, and it hit me. Oh, Lord, hallelujah, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, it did. But you know what came out of my mouth? I said, oh, Father, that was dumb. <laughs> That's what came out. Now, I was operating from my personal identity, spiritually. Not out of one in the flesh, because out of it, I said, God, damn. That probably was in the flesh. Because that's what the flesh is used to saying. So your personal identity can be from realization who you are spiritually as a son. But it also can be your personal identity, who you are in the flesh, from biological birth. And you will say those things and live the, and think. But matter of fact, let me put it this way. You live in fear. No matter how much revelation you have, no matter how long you've been preaching or teaching, it does not matter. Because there must be an exchange of identity from personal identity in biological birth to personal identity in spiritual birth. When the spiritual identity takes hold, the biological identity is done away. Now, when I say that, please hear me. When I say done away, that literally means it's a process, and that process is called the process of sonship. Monica was telling us last time she, uh, she was driving and the car was stalling and people were blowing at her and honking at her. And she was saying, oh, father. Now, it would have been a time when she probably would have said something else. She'd have been fearful, gotten, getting upset. Because when people start blowing at you, you kind of, the, 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 the fear of, that, that attacks you at those moments, fear attacks your mind. But if you're operating from your personal identity as the son spiritually, those attacks meet a wall. Father, I know you got this. I know these people upset. But I trust you to take care of this. Now, that sounds good sitting here. But when you're out there, when you're out there, when you're in the thick of it, what comes to your mind comes from the identity that you're in. And if you're spontaneously living as who you are as a son spiritually, and I need to say it spiritually. Let me say it again. Spiritually. 
What did I say? Spiritually. That Spiritually. must be realized. You cannot make that happen. You can't wish that to be. It happens because your heart and mind is set on that. If you got a struggle, if you're struggling with your identity spiritually, let me tell you, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Tell me, some, can somebody tell me why it's a good thing? If it didn't bother you, you weren't concerned. You were in a good world. <clears throat> Correct. But if you're concerned, you're going to seek into it and investigate it and let the spirit work. The last part. All the rest of it, y'all can do what you want. Yeah. I just want the last part. Last part. <laughs> <laughs> I want the last part. He who seeks your Let the spirit yeah. work because the spirit will take you into realization. Right. But you see, the struggle is the coming into realization. Most of us are afraid of that. We're afraid of the struggle. But, but yet we want to live the sun. We want to live who we are. And I, I, I'm not casting stones at anybody. But let me tell you, you cannot, Paul said, for the life which I now live in the flesh. What did he say? Live by the faith of the Son of God. Slow it down. I live by the faith of Spars. the Son of God. I live by the faith. Mm -hmm. I live by the faith. Hmm. Of what? The Son of God. Now... You can make that Christ. You can make that Christ. If you read it, you can make it Christ. But who is that? The Son. That's yeah. you. Whose faith are you going to live by? The faith of the Son. You live by your faith. You understand you live by your faith no matter what? Paul said, it is according to my gospel. It's your faith no matter what. Whether you're in the flesh or whether you're in the spirit, it's still your faith. I live by the faith of the Son of God. Because it was given to us. Right. That's the real key. Absolutely. It's ours because it was given to us. The seed goes into the oven and it makes someone. It bursts someone. Religion can't give you that. Now, I've got one, two with Jim over there, Jim and Jimmy. Uh, I think Lopez told me at one time he was too <coughs> Catholic. Yeah. See, I got, I got some former Catholics here. <coughs> Catholicism can't do it. Did Catholicism do it for you? No. <coughs> Jim? No. Lopez? No. Why? Because they are impotent. If my son-in-law was impotent, I wouldn't have a grandson. <laughs> That's true. And you know what impotent means? Impotent just means, now, let me, let me say it's, it's two things, but really the only important thing about impotency is you can't bring forth seed. Right. You can't bring forth sperm. Now, Abraham had that happen to him. God said, I tell you what, I'm going to fix you. See, you went over there and had Hagar, <laughs> you brought forth your own kind of son, but that's not what I wanted. So I'm going to fix it where you can't have none. So what did God do to him? He killed him. E.D. E.D. E -D. Erection dead. <laughs> <laughs> he became erection dead. What does that mean? That means no matter who it was, he couldn't bring forth seed until it was time. Chapter 18 God came to him and said, I'll restore unto you. Next year, I'll restore unto you that, read it, that time of life. Well, I read that the first time the Spirit said, you go back and read that again. I will restore unto you that time of life. What time? We have to go to Paul. Romans chapter 4. God who quickens the dead and call those things that be not as though they were and to Abraham and, and to, uh, and to uh, Sarah who was dead and Abraham was dead also. What do you mean Abraham was dead? He was E.D. 
God said, you, you, if, you, if you can't control it, I'll fix it so you won't be able to do anything. That's why when God said to Sarah, I will restore unto you, unto you next year the time of life, and you shall have a son. Sarah, Sarah said, what, what do you mean? Listen, read it, King James Version. She said, shall I have pleasure at this age and my Lord, Lord too? She said, you, you said I'm going to have something I haven't had in a long time? Now let me let me let me give you a little let me give you a little sidebar. The next year, Abraham and Sarah were sitting around the campfire. Abraham said, "Well, Sarah, it's time to go to bed." He stood up on the day he got ready to go to bed, and 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 God moved upon him. He said, "Whoa, Sarah! Whoa! I'm alive! <laughs> I'm alive!" <laughs> I have to have fun with that. <laughs> she, Abraham said, Sarah, I'm alive. She said, honey, I'll see you in the tent. <laughs> and we know what happened. Isaac came after that. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, the seed, Catholicism, evangelical theology, evangelical Christianity, a Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, Pentecostal you name it, all are impotent. They can't bring forth spiritual seed. Now the seed they can bring forth is a seed of the flesh. They can make you a Baptist. They can make you a Catholic. They can make you a Presbyterian. They can make you a Methodist. They can make you a assembly of God. Church of God. Church of God in Christ. In all of these names they can tell you. Seven day at Dennis. They're no different. Seventh-day Adventists, they believe in going to church on Saturday. It's the same. And if you don't get that baptism, guess what happens? You're not saved. Works. Yeah. Works salvation. It didn't make a difference. It's their works. Yeah. So all I'm saying is everything that you can think of that man can say. Son, seed to produce spiritual son. The sooner we realize that, the sooner personal identity will begin to be swallowed up in spiritual life as a son of God. You get up in the morning, you must come to realization that's the son of God living in the... It amazes me. You get up in the morning, most of you, unless you, like Jimmy, you sleep in your clothes. But you, just joking. Just joking, but I don't know if that's true or not. But just joking. When you get up in the morning, most of people get up and they, they sleep in pajamas. They change out of their pajamas and they put on clothes. Right? Those of you who don't sleep with anything on, it's easy for you to get up and put on some clothes because you can't go out like that. But the bottom line is this. Whatever you put on, that's what you look like for the rest of the day. How about this? How about getting up as a son, putting on a body that you live in, and knowing it's just the covering for who you are spiritually? That your father, you about your father's business. You begin to see from where? Inside, Inside out. out. Inside out. For our outer man is what? Perishing. Perishing. How long? Day by day. Our outer man, the clothes you put on, is perishing day by day. Down motivation. Down motivation, that's exactly right. But what about the inner man? What about the inner man that you, now remember the inner man. Paul is writing about the inner man as though we read it as though he's talking about someone else. He's not talking about someone else. He's talking about him. He, he is, you are the inner man. You happen to put on a body that, that you're used to, but I have to tell you, that's not your personal identity anymore. See, Don Curtis, that's not his personal identity. We are the inner man. Jackie, the new creation that you are is the inner man. That's who you are spiritually. That is the inner man. 
So the minute that's realized, you then begin to see from the inside out and everything that goes on around you on a daily basis no longer is a hindrance to you. It's part of the problem. I remember several months ago, the father said to me once, I was facing something, he said to me, you understand, and he talks to me that way, he said, you understand, and I, when he said that, I know better than say, oh yeah, I do understand. No, I don't. He said that to me because he wants me to understand. He said, you understand, this is the process of sonship. Man, when, it said, when he said that to me, it was like a, it was like a, 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 a safety valve. Everything I face, at that moment, even, even if I don't catch it, even at that moment, and I don't catch it, and I get upset, I get frustrated, the Spirit would say to me, you know what this is? It's the process of sonship. That, that puts a blanket on, I'm now seeing from the inside out. It might not change a thing that's going on around me, but now I see it's the inside out. I say, You're right, it's the process of sonship. I even said one day, later I said, he, he, he told me that, and I said, yeah, Father, it's the process of sonship. That don't mean I got to like it. I don't have to like it, but I know what it is. And knowing what it is takes the steam of death out of it. Takes the steam of fear out of it. It's the process of sonship. Jackie, it's the process of sonship. It hurts. It's the process of sonship. But it's my father's hurt, which is a little different than Dwight hurt me. It's a little different than, than, than Patricia hurting me. It's a little different than, than Jenny hurting me or, or Monica hurting me. Monica says that, and it hurts me. But when I know it's the process of sonship, one is necessary. If I'm responding out of who I am in the flesh, or who I used to be in the flesh anyway, then it's the process of sonship bringing me to where my father wants me to be. I'm, I'm heading toward realization. I'm heading toward realization. So when it's a process of sonship, it's no longer Monica, it's no longer Dwight or Patricia or Martin or Sylvia. It's my father. It's no longer eating, not even the devil. Because a lot of you get, a lot of you devil worshipers out there. The devil is it. Nicole, it's, you're, it's a devil worship. It's the devil. It's always the devil. It's got to be somebody that's making me or affecting me and hurting me versus the Father. The Bible is plain. God chastens and scourges every. How many? Every. every. Who does that leave out? <laughs> so why you blame the devil? Every son that he loved. And he that is without correction, in other words, you fighting because you, 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 don't, you want to blame, I want to blame Patricia. Lord, I want to, I'm buying that devil on Patricia. <laughs> but he that is without chastening is as a what? Bastard. Bastard. Illegitimate. What does that mean? You don't know who your father is. Illegitimate? You don't know who your father is. Or your mother, but that verse says father. Mm -hmm. But he said, no chastening seems to be what? Pleasant for a season. <laughs> Joyous at the time. Mm -hmm. But it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to them that are what? Exercise. You're getting a little out of shape. You can't just count either. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, Jim, Jimmy was counting for me today when I was in there doing some, some, some training. But exercise thereby. You, when you exercise, in other words, when you're moved, exercise is movement. When you're moved by the Spirit, and when those muscles start to hurt, when you're lifting some, when those muscles start to hurt, the lactic acid begin to come out, it burns. It hurts. You want to put it down. And you probably do. You do put it down. It hurts. Well, those who exercise by it, it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness. You know, the key word there is peaceable because it basically means the end of the struggle and the beginning of rest. 
Good. Good. Well, keep going. I don't want to hear that. I haven't been asking any questions yet. <laughs> I'm asking you what do you mean by that? <laughs> there is, when we're in that struggle, that's not peace. Mm -hmm. We have not surrendered. Mm -hmm. And as long as there's the fight in us and the discipline and the scourging of the Lord, that's not peaceful. That's stress. Uh, anybody go, go to Bone Daddy's to figure that out. <laughs> that's stressful. That is intense, but that brings forth the peaceable mm -hmm. and righteousness. And within that peace is rest. Mm -hmm. And within obedience is rest. Mm -hmm. And it's a word I've really never heard in there before because we, we constantly see the conflict of, uh, of the struggle. Mm -hmm. But when we surrender, there's rest in that. And there's peace. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it seems like that entire verse when I read it is, is intense and it sounds painful. And then he says it produces the peaceful. Mm -hmm. And um, fruit. Fruit. Which is expression of. Yes. But it, 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 produces, it produces that which the struggle, we went into the struggle not having. Mm -hmm. That's, yes. That's all I got to say. But we don't have what we call practical peace or practical righteousness till we yield and let the Spirit change us. And then we get to see what that righteousness really means. And also, you've been talking about fear. Perfect love casts out fear. He was fearful, not yet made perfect <laughs> love or complete. Right. And I think a lot of it, we can't turn ourselves over to the Lord fully. We don't love Him enough either. And when we really put him above us and love him more, that's when it becomes a little easier and we are not resisting and fighting. And uh, then that, that's when it really comes forth in peace. So let me ask you a question now. Okay. I already got the answer, but. Well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you were uh, asking anything you didn't have. <laughs> So, uh, I want to, I want to, I'm not, I'm not setting our brother up, but I am. It's a <laughs> trap door into this question. <laughs> See, if he goes set on this trap door. So how do you put him first? I think you have to be led by the spirit to do that and get your whole heart. I kept reading scriptures about your whole heart. Mm -hmm. I think we have our hearts divided and the heart's desperately wicked mm -hmm. and all that. So there's all this thing we've got our own. But but didn't things. you get a new one? Didn't you get a new one when you? Hand me the the two face, the two face bottle. Which, I don't know. Well, that's, that's it right there. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Dwight. Yeah. Yeah. We, we we got a new heart. No question about it. Okay. However, do we utilize that? Do we practically let Him live in us and flow out of us? As you said, we don't. We do I didn't say of, it, but okay. <laughs> we do a lot of stuff still, still on the outside. Yes. We don't mean to, but we do. And that's, no, I, You're right. That's the things I want to do, I don't. Yeah. And the things I don't want to do, I yes, do. Yes, absolutely. okay. People, we got a new nature. Right. But we don't always lend to that. What I feel like we don't understand Romans 6, 6. Right. And, and again, it says if, if we really trust him and realize the old man was crucified with Christ, we won't employ the body of sin. Oh. But we do employ the body of sin because we don't we choose that. Don't you think the body of sin then is our personal identity that we really need? Absolutely. Okay. That's Just, another way of looking at okay. it. It's all involving. Well, I think it's the correct way, but personally. Well, I think you're right. <laughs> I'm just I know you're right. I mean seriously, that's what happens. Okay. Uh, uh, Let me ask you for it. If it's a blues Christ, who's the first? In this, Christ is. Christ. Who's the second if we're red? And you that's, are. that's still two people. Right. You can always, you can, you can have this life, you can have this understanding, you can live in this false reality and put Christ first and still be two people. Mm -hmm. 
What what are we not seeing? Thank you, Jimmy. And then and he, uh, well, uh, D- D- Dwight echoed that before you even got yeah, it out. And it's the new creation. We don't see the new creation. We don't. Well, we haven't realized. Right. Realized is a key word. Yeah, you're right. We haven't realized the new creation. So if we're talking about putting God first, people say it all the time. We put God first. Well, our family next. Our job. And people hierarchy it. Well, there is no hierarchy. When Jesus said in John 17, my, he said, my father and I are one. But in John 17, he said, Father, listen, I was reading this the other day. And it, it gripped me the other day. He said, Father, I pray that they be one as we are one. Now, how in the, what did he mean? I was, I was, I'm, I'm doing this because the father had this dialogue the other day. I didn't ask him what that mean. I already knew because she said it when I read it. He said, Father, I pray that they be one as we are one. Not they be one with each other, but that they be one themselves, just like you and I are one, so they can be one with us. So there's no putting anything. It's being someone, being some that produces or manifests right. or expresses yeah. it's expression. our Father spiritually because we are the Son to Him. Spirit. Now, we are all sons, right. but to Him, Patricia is the Son. She's not male. I mean, she's not female. She's not black. She just happened to be wearing this body. I had this thought the other day. It's part of my message on Sunday. I'm tapping into that. <laughs> think about this. Think about this. Nicole, think about this. Why is it in Christ there's no male and female? Paul said that. We really don't grasp that. That's not realized because of our personal identity. But think about this. Maybe Paul is seeing something that he wasn't allowed to tell us about. How about this? If the earthly house of this tabernacle shall be dissolved, I have. I have. Another house, not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. I have. Amen. All right. Now think about this. Peter said, born again, not of a corruptible seed, mm-hmm. but incorruptible. That's not Christ in you. That's another identity. That's literally another identity. Which births you out of your personal identity in the flesh, which is the first seed, into the new identity we have spiritually as the son. Which does not have human. Ooh, this is tough. I might not even say this one. <laughs> I'm not going to say it either. I'm not going to even say it. I am not going to say it. Jackie, I, I know you, you can't make me say it either. You cannot make me say it. And, and you can't get your husband to make me say it either. I'm not going to even say it. Do you know how dynamic that is? I'm not going to even say it. Some of you already know what I'm going to say. Well, you believe you know what I'm going to say. Nicole, do you know what I was going to say? Oh, you do? Yeah. Think about it. Oh, okay. Think about it. What what are we going to say? You want me to tell you? Say it. Tell me. DNA. DNA. Yeah. There's no human DNA. True. So you don't get to the Father's house being a human. You're still a man because you still got the same soul, mind. But you don't have the same body that connects you to anything here. That they may be one as we are one. Not connected by flesh and blood, but connected by spirit. spirit. Yes, amen. Whoa, glory. That's how Christ lived. Connected to the Father. Connected to the Father as one. As one. So, I can say, and in John 14 and 8, 
When you see me, you see the Father. But I also can tell you one other thing that that says. When you see me, you see the Son. Now, some of you can, some of you, I can take, we, you can handle, when you see me, you see the sun. That's okay. You, you, that, that takes you, that, that take you to the gate and into the house and get a sandwich. <laughs> Put on some chips. And chips. Yeah. Yeah. Gabriel, could you bring me another bowl of salsa with some <laughs> chips? That'll get you in the house with a sandwich and some chips. But when you see me, you see the Father. That's going to take a revelation or a realization. Amen. Seeing the Son will do it too. Because oh, everybody yeah. gets caught up into, into two person gospel. When Jesus said, when you see me, Philip, why do you say that? For when you see me, why do you say show us the Father? When you see me, you see the Father. How can that be? They're one. That's right. When you see me, you see the Son. How can that be? Can you tell which is the red and which is the blue? This is a new creation. This is another color. Or in the case of what we're talking about, another person. We are, we are another person spiritually. You are another person spiritually. Now, if you act now, I told that to Catherine not too long ago. I said, the difference I see around in Christianity is most people advocate being a Christian. Most people advocate being saved. But if you're living in your flesh every day, if you're walking in your flesh every day, and there is no struggle, maybe you'll now have what you say you have. What about that, Jenny? Is that, oh, no. What about that, Jackie? There has to be a struggle somewhere. That's where you learn. No, no, no. I'm, well, yes, you're true. But there has to be a struggle when you're living every day in your flesh, and you have no struggle about being in the flesh. It has to be somewhere inside of you that's saying, you know, this is not who you are. You need to stop that. There's no life in this. That, right, there's no life in this. So, so, when you become another person spiritually, there is a struggle. I'm not saying that you're going to not walk in your flesh, you're going to not have some sins in the flesh, you're not going to smoke a joint here and there and make you feel good. I'm just using that as an expression. You might even steal a dollar or two from the till. Say, oh, Lord, forgive me. Well, that's a struggle. I can, I can live with struggle. I can live with, with people who have certain addictions, but who struggle with them. And you say, Lord, the Father, Lord, or God, or whatever, I don't really like this. I, I, I need your help. There has to be a struggle because the struggle is the new identity, the new person you are, wants to come out, but he's having trouble. Paul said, the things I want to do, I don't. And the things I don't want to do, I do all the time. He says, for I've seen a law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, bringing my mind to captivity, the law of sin that's in my body, in my flesh. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Yes, Dwight. I uh, think the real problem is that these people that go to these natural churches, as we call them, <laughs> buildings, yeah. and they are hearing this religion, and they've taken it in so long, they become desensitized. Ooh, glory to that brother! Did you hear when he used that? He used that word. Mm -hmm. Pete, did you hear? Uh, Pete, did you hear you use that word? Desensitized. <laughs> and, and, and they really, while they could struggle. They don't know what's going on. They have no idea. They've been so desensitized and it's been so long, it's like it's their conscience is seared and they Ooh, don't, that's another that's a that's a that's a they first don't, they don't that's have a second Thessalonians word there. And it's sad because they don't know where they are or why they are. And after a while they don't uh, I agree to a certain extent. Yeah. Can I can I give you my, sure. my up to a certain extent? Yeah. I agree to a certain extent. But remember when, when, when that baby comes out of amber, it becomes Martin's responsibility as a father right. to provide. Right? Now, amber might work, but Martin's a father. He has a responsibility to take care of his son. And from what I see, he's he going to be very zealous of that boy because mm -hmm. I'm going to help him. Mm 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let me introduce you to Bone Daddy's brother. <laughs> I'm gonna help him. Cause I'm looking for that boy to be what what? We talking about six eight, six nine maybe? Six nine, six ten. Yeah, six nine, six ten. He, the, the baby in her womb right now is thirty weeks and his legs is thirty two weeks. <laughs> Yeah, so we look at it, you know, I'm, I'm talking about, you know, uh, uh, but Martin's responsibility as the father will be to take care of that boy and his wife. When God births us to be the son to him, he does that for us. So you can be a, a believer who is ignorant of who you are, but the father will always have the work of the Holy Spirit pulling you, making you dissatisfied with your personal identity in the flesh. Now you can ignore it, but it's there. It's there. It's like this little bird in the back of your mind. You know what you're doing is not right. You know what you're doing is not, I won't even use the word who you are, but you will know that's not what you should be doing because you quote a believer or you quote a Christian or you quote have Christ in you. It doesn't fit. But that little bird in the back of your mind. Now, if you don't have that little bird, guess what? Maybe you don't have what you say. Because many people say, I believe in Jesus. That's okay. But the verse says in John 1 and 12, as many, as many as what? Received it. Thank you. As many as receive him, to them gave he power. That's <laughs> coming down. Coming in wrath. Right? Yeah, man. <laughs> as many as received him, to them gave he power to become. So if you haven't received, you can't become. Right. Right, Jackie? So maybe you haven't received. I've, let, I've talked to people who profess to be Christians for a long time. I talked to one young lady. She was in the church choir. She played the trumpet. She could sing. Everybody called this young lady a Christian. But when I looked into her eyes, there was emptiness. The Spirit said, she's empty. It shocked me the first time I heard that because that was kind of strange because everybody called this girl a Christian. Her father was a preacher of a large church in town. And so the father worked it out eight months, nine months later. She was visiting, and she had to stay with us because she didn't have room where she was visiting. And I came into the house one day after work, and there was a big argument in my house. And she was arguing with the young man who had invited her there. He, she, he was single, and he, he, she couldn't stay with him, so he asked us if, if, if he, she could stay with us, and I, we said yes. I came into my house, and they were arguing. Just a big argument. Mm-hmm. So I walked in the door. I'm serious. I walked in the door, and there's, there's people in my house. They were arguing. I said, what's going on? And so everybody tried to tell me at one time what was happening. I said, hold on, hold on a minute. So I said to her, I said, uh, I said, I talked to the young man, anybody, because he was the one upset. I said, tell me what happened, brother. And so he explained to me what happened. She had epilepsy. He didn't know that. She knew it. And she had an epileptic seizure. Frightening. He was a doctor. <laughs> but she had an epileptic seizure, and it, it frightened him. So he called her parents. She's 22 years old. You don't call her parents. <laughs> In her mind. So she, he called her parents. And then he talked to her. And she got upset. Because she, she knew what was happening. She knew what to do. And so she got upset with him. And they got in this argument. So I came in. I said, okay, brother, thank you. I said, can I talk to you? She said, yeah, David. So I went, we went to the bedroom. And I was standing there. And I said to her, she said, he, what happened? And she, she, she gave me her side of story. And as she was talking, I was looking at her eye to eye. Mm-hmm. And the father said to me, tell her, where's her square one? That's what we call back. That's what the first thing he gave me about. Where's your square? In other words, where's the time you believed on Jesus? Where's that time? Mm-hmm. And she said, <clears throat> I said, where's your square one? She said, what do you mean? I said, where's that time that you knew you needed Christ? Where's that time? And she said these words. Like a lot of people say, that's why I'm, I'm, I'm totally, I'm, I'm completely against 
people do it, telling a, a four, a five-year-old, well, you need to receive Jesus and the pardon your sins. You need to leave him alone. You need to let the Holy Spirit work on them. They need to get a little older so they can understand some things. They, they, they're still in innocence. Leave them alone. You can tell them about Christ, but don't try to get them saved. Well, her parents told her she got saved. They told her she got saved at six. Now, remember, they told her that. So I said, I said so what does that mean? She said to me, I don't know. I said, where's your square one? What does that mean? And she looked at me. This girl been in church all her life, Church of God, all her life. And she looked at me and said, oh, my God. <clears throat> David, I'm not saved. I didn't tell her that. The Spirit was working on her. And then she said to me, after all these years in church, you know what this woman said to me? What do I do to be saved? Mm -hmm. She should have already known that. Mm -hmm. She said, what do I do to be saved? <clears throat> and I said, I said, I tell you what, I'm going to pray for you. I said, but first, I want you to pray. And I took her hand. I had just learned this the year before. Because usually when I led people to the Lord, I used to do it like everybody else did. Repeat after me. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Forgive me for the part of my sins and come into my heart. I used to tell I used to tell. But I had a good brother in the Lord who's going to be with him right now. When I was saying that to this young man, he said, wait a minute. And this is what I said to her. I said, you know what God's saying to you right now. You know what's in, you know what you're hearing because you wouldn't have said what you did. So I said, I'm going to take your hand, I'm gonna pray, but I want you to pray for it. Say whatever it is that you're hearing. And she said, Lord, I don't really know you. Lord, I, I, I need you. I, I need to be the person you want me to be. I, I mean, she said those words. And then I prayed. All I did was pray a confirming prayer. Father, I know you heard it. Reveal to her what it means to have Christ in her. When she said amen, I said amen. I said, I need you to go call your dad. That's what he told me to tell her. She went over and she picked up the phone. She called her father. Preacher. Mm -hmm. She said, and she sat there and she talked to him. I left the room. She came and got me. I said, what did your dad say? She said, this is, this is his words. This is a parent who wanted his child to be saved, who told her she was saved since she was. You know what he's told her? I've known that all along. She said, I'm glad you received Jesus. Now, why did he tell her that himself? Fear, fear of religion produces destruction. His personal identity as a pastor, as a preacher, Kept him from telling his daughter, what we said to you is not right. You need to, have, you need to receive Christ for yourself. I still say there's a lot of pride in all that. It might be, but that comes from fear. Right. Fear produces pride. Right. So he told her that. And my next words to her, I said, listen, I knew where we were going to church, and I knew those people. I said, listen, sis, I'm glad. Welcome to a new, I walked in there and I introduced her as a new creation of Christ. The whole room, people in the house clapped. My brother, who had known her, who was the doctor, took her, took her outside, went outside with him. He said, brother, because I, I said that to him earlier, almost a year before then. I said, she's not saying, oh, yes, she is. Why would you say that? Well, when she came out and said that, he backed up. He said, brother, I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I said, you don't tell me anything. It's not between you and me. I said, the father does not make mistakes. <clears throat> So I said to her, there's people, the enemy does not want you to know who you are in Christ. Mm -hmm. So you're going to find people that say, oh, no, you've been saved. You, no, no, no. You, maybe you didn't know who you were. Mm -hmm. Two days later, after meeting with the pastor's wife and daughter, she came and packed her stuff up and moved in with them. But that's okay. I, you know why? Because she didn't leave the same way she came. I was satisfied. My job was done. My job is done. That's the difference between what we're talking about in personal identity in the flesh produced by fear versus personal identity in the spirit that's produced by the Father. Okay? Amen?
Dwight, you don't want to throw, you don't want to throw any more on there? Uh, well, yeah, everything you're saying is actually right. Okay. You got all kinds of problems, and and again, we just gotta go through them and let the spirit lead us, change us, and get our minds renewed to that truth. That's right. Get our minds renewed, and that's what Curtis was saying in, in his statements a few minutes ago. When that happens, none of you, if you're not careful, none of you will want that. I don't care how much revelation you have, how long you've been in the message, how long you've been teaching the gospel. That's, remember, the longer it's been, the harder it's going to be. You know that? The longer it's been, the harder it's going to be. Why? Because personal identity. See, Jenny was a Baptist. Jenny, you were Baptist at one time, wasn't you? Mm -hmm. Didn't your personal space include being a Baptist? Mm -hmm. you, Check you, that box every time you fill out a paper. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what that looks like if you on a if you on a if you on a science fiction movie? That'd be your force field. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing penetrates the force field. <laughs> you can stand there and take it because you're a Baptist. You got the you got the Bible. You got the Holy Spirit teaching you. Let the shield down. Let the shield down. It, it won't hurt for long. <laughs> Only when you fight, because you, you're fighting, as Paul, Jesus told Paul, Saul at the time, why are you kicking against the brick? If you let the spirit move, he'll give you more hunger. And if you really have more <clears throat> hunger for him, he'll open up the really. That's, That's correct. The key. Too many people aren't hungry and thirsty. That's and correct. Yeah. Now that goes back to that little part I told you. If there is no struggle, mm -hmm. there is no hunger. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And if there's no hunger, then maybe you're not who you think you are. Do you think we got 90% of the people not saved? I'm going to go there. <laughs> I, I will tell you this. The vast majority of people who are in churches don't know what it means to be born again. Mm -hmm. The vast majority of people who say they're born again don't know what it means, who they are, based on that identity. Right. Because they've added Christ to it. They've added Jesus to their identity. And, that's, and I'm, I don't mean to be tough, but that's believers who will say Christ lives in me. I, there is no difference. Think about this. You got the good one? Or do I have the good one? Uh, you got the good one. Give me the good one. <laughs> That's the good one? That's yeah. the good one? I thought that was the bad one. Well, good for what I want to say. This is Christ in me. It's two. It's still two of us. My statement, I, I said this to Brother Warren. I said this to many others. Who does Christ in you make you to God? Who, who, who are you? Who does he make you to, to the Father? He can only be one person. You can't be two persons. He only can make you one person. Who is that person? Is it Dwight? Is it Monica? Does he make you Monica to the Father? No, he doesn't. Who does he make you to the Father? Does he make you Jesus? Can't be. He's already been to the cross. Who does God make you when he puts Christ in you? You have to be somebody new. It can't be Jesus. It can't be Christ. Who does he make you? One person. The Son. The Spirit. Thank you. The spiritual Son of God. Thank you. Yeah, I was going to say, when you were talking about DNA. Yes, sir. You can have uh, physical DNA as a, as a fleshly man. Mm -hmm. But a spiritual DNA is the divine nature attributes. And we don't want to make an attribute of this body that we live in as God. You know, right. A, a, right. Or as right. the Son. And right. That's a misunderstanding, too, that people have. Yeah. Right. But, but, you know, and the thing is, is that you have to have the same attributes that your, your older brother has because he's the seed. And he put with that to make you the son. And that's another person. Well, that's powerful. You're, you're right, Jimmy. And, and, and sadly, Satan through religion wants to deny that. Yeah. 
Because, as Paul said in Romans 7, you don't know what to do with your flesh. You really don't. You don't know what to do with it. You look in the mirror and you see you and you see this can't be true. Are you telling me I'm God? Yeah. <laughs> let, let, me, let, me, let me give you something this brother gave. We, he and I was talking last month. He said, I was reading something. He said, David, I know this is, Curtis said it first. I must give, Curtis said it first, but Jimmy said it in another way. Curtis first saw, I am. Now, if you don't, if you, you can go back, go to the, go to the, the, the YouTube. And it, was, it was a year ago, this conference. That's right. So that. That's right. Last, <laughs> last May. I am. I am. Jimmy said, he said, David, I don't know how to put this, but I am the only begotten of the Father. Now, that'll scare the hell out of some people. I wish, it, I wish it could, but it can't. But it makes the idea of the hierarchy relevant to you. You see, in personal identity, you have to have the hierarchy. But how can you have the hierarchy and be one at the same time? What are you saying? What, what, I, what I received at the moment, the Holy Spirit, the Father said to me, yes. Do you understand what that means? That means you're the only one on the planet as the only begotten son of God living in that body because there's no other DNA like yours. That is the only begotten of the father living in that body because there's no one else on this planet got his DNA. He's uniquely expressing the son of God that nobody else can. That's why he's the only begotten. That's why we're the son to the father. We don't think that way because personal identity produces personal space and personal space says, I can't be that person. Hallelujah. That's what Warren used to say. <laughs> personal identity says you cannot be the only begotten because Jesus was the only. Well, he was the first begotten. He said the first begotten. Right, at first begotten of all creation, yeah. all creatures. All creatures. But not since then, uh-uh, there's a whole bunch of begotten. Why would it say first begotten if he was the only? Mm-hmm. Correct. <laughs> he was the beginning, but he's not the end. Right. This is the first begotten of the Father in this body. This is the first begotten of the Father in this body. This is the first begotten in this body. This is the first, I'm, I'm sorry, the only begotten. I'm sorry, not first, the only. Yeah, the only. This is the only begotten. Patricia is the only begotten of the Father living in that body. The Son of God as Patricia McCoy. And we don't know her name. She, she, she doesn't know her name. <laughs> she doesn't know her name. So she has to answer to one or two things. She has to answer to Patricia, or she has to answer as the Son. She can answer as a Son living in the body called Patricia. Right. Think about that. Think about the dynamics in that. I am that I am because I am the only begotten of my father living in this body. I am that I am. That's, that's, we, oh. Isn't that what he says in John 7? That they may be one? Yes. In us as I am in you. And you me. As, you're correct. <laughs> you're correct. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. All right. Mark. Mark you, Mark, you got the questions yet? Is he still there, Jim? Okay, maybe he's working. Yeah, no, I'm um, yeah. I'm listening. <laughs> you got the question? Uh, yes. Shoot it. Um, just give me one sec. I'll stop what I'm doing. <laughs> the brother, uh, brother, that word. <laughs> Dave, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So, so I love what you guys are saying. To hear what you guys are saying, and it just confirms a lot of things. Um, it's a bit of a, a situation that I was just talking to the father one day coming home. The question came at the end of it. So you guys were talking about something about, uh, I don't know what it was, but you mentioned the mind of Christ. 
Okay. You know, then, I, then, I, then I opposed. I said, oh, what's the mind of Christ? Mm -hmm. And uh, the Father showed me some things that actually blew my mind. He, he said to me, what the mind of Christ is. Let me just go outside. He said to me, what the mind of Christ is, is your mind, you live in the flesh. We live in the flesh, um, and everything is is a thought. Mm -hmm. It's a feeling. It's mm -hmm. a sense, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's got to do with our past, our present, where we are, our identity. Everything that we talk about so is far, so good. related to that. Mm -hmm. He says, when you, when you think, you think emotionally. And everything in your brain is going like, you know, how you're feeling. You try and reason, you try and logic. And then he said something to me that it, I've never even thought about it or even heard about it. He said, when you, when you think in the spirit, there is no emotion. There's no feeling. It's the truth mm -hmm. and it's powerful and it comes out direct. There's no confusion. There's no misunderstanding. Right. He says, and the difference between you on the earth living as physical in the flesh mm -hmm. and being um, spiritual is totally different. It's, it's like we, we're in two different worlds. We are, yes. so to speak. <laughs> yes, yes, but it's, you're right. And I, and I thought to myself, well, that's so true. And then he, he showed me that when you, because I've always questioned, okay, is this voice, you know, you're talking about the bird and that little voice in your head, okay, you, th you always think to yourself, is that me? Is that God? Is that the Father? And he, and he showed me how when God speaks, there's no doubt. He, it, it, it's, it's honest to the point that's unemotional, it's truthful, you know, you, you can sense straight away right. his voice. There's, there's, no, there's no confusion. It's just you, 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 you know in your spirit, 100%. It's 100% correct and you, you, truthful. Uh, 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 Mark? Yes? Jenny just said that because that's the same mind. Yeah. Let this mind be in you that was... So it's the same mind. Oh, it's the same mind yeah. because it's the same spirit. It's the same yep. spirit because it's one with yep. the Father. Yeah, well, that's the thing. It's the, it's the spirit of, of God. But now this is where my question comes in. Okay. Why do we say the mind of God or the mind of Christ? Because it's spiritual. Uh. I, I, I will give you the I'll give you the short answer. I'll give you the cliff notes answer to that. But no, let, let, let me let me have somebody else. Anybody else want to answer that question yeah. for him? Well, what, here's what I've said. You know, I've heard more and other things say things, but I don't agree with. It. But bottom line is, when we got Christ, we didn't get a mindless Christ. It's not our mind. He's got the mind. He got a mind. We got a mind of Christ in us, and we we receive Christ in total. And what we're trying to do is get our natural mind renewed to a spiritual mind till it's in one with his mind so that, that we have really one mind. And, and we, he got, he's got a mind in us all the time. I've had times where I didn't know what to say, but the mind of Christ took over and it worked. And I, we need to have that more often. And I think once we see this union and this oneness, we're going to have to see that. Okay, good, good, good. What was the question again? Uh, Mark asked about why do we say the mind of Christ or the mind of God? That's the question. Why do we say that? Because so we, 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 Christ it, has made us sons to our Father, so we have the mind of Christ. we have the mind of the Son and the Son. Okay. So we we the the, the same mind. Uh, I don't know how to say it, but that mind of the son, he, that is what the father sees in us now, his mm -hmm. sons. So we kind of, we, we have that divine nature of the father mm -hmm. in us now. Mm -hmm. And that's the mind. When we are walking in the spirit, we are operating in that mind of mm -hmm. the son. Right, right. Okay. In, anybody else? More? Kurt? Uh, actually, let me hit my button. It's actually what I'm teaching on tomorrow. Well, give us a sliver of it. No. <laughs>
Okay, Nicole, you want to add something? You, you want to answer some of that from your, from your husband? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. I'll leave that up to you, David. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have heard her. Oh, 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 okay, sister, I, I can see where you're going with that. But let me get some more answers from here first. I want to hear, Jenny, what do you think about that? How would you answer Mark's question? About the mind of... Why do we say the mind of Christ and the mind of God, and why do we say those things? Well, I, I mean, I, it's just like I said earlier, I, God spoke to me one time, and I asked him, I said, is this my mind, is this me think, wishful thinking in my mind, or is this you speaking to me? And he said to me very clearly, we have the same mind. That's all I got to say about that. <laughs> That's pretty good. It's, like, it's just like when Mark just said, mm -hmm. when he speaks to you, you know. You know. You absolutely know. Okay. Right. And okay, I find right. that okay. if I'm questioning it, I am not in the spirit. Okay. That really isn't. What did you say, uh, Mark? Okay, so can, can I put a spin on the situation? Okay. From out of the thing. Can I say... Can I? I'm asking the question. Can I say I don't have the mind of Christ? I have the spirit of Christ. That's because, true. That's true. I mean, I mean, I'm not, it's, but it's, it, it, our it, spirits it, are one. The Bible never, the Bible never mentioned. Well, the, the, the scriptures never say the mind is one. It says our spirit is one. So if we have one, we have one spirit. Uh huh. So, so it's, you know, we are one, and that's. We as humans, as mortals, see it as a as a mind thing, but it's it's. I think it's. I think it's just. You think it's spiritual, spiritual, right? You think it's more spiritual. Sp more spiritual. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Right. Because yeah. they're all becoming one, even though they're somewhat can be separated, but still, they're in this union case. It's hard to tell the difference. Mm -hmm. Well, remember, union is two separate things until they, they come one. They, well, yeah. until death happens and two right. become one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's but not going to be perfect. Kurt, Kurt, Kurt wants to say something. I had Noreen. I'm kind of with Jenny oh. on this. Um, it was, what, three years ago before when we had our last uh, Weekend in the Word? Weekend in the Word. Yeah. Um, it was about a week before that, and the father was, the father had started two weeks before that, revealing unity, I mean, excuse me, union, oneness, and identity, mm -hmm. and I mean, he was putting it on thick. It was, it was heavy. It was serious, and a week later, which was a Sunday, I was walking before the, the morning I was going to teach, because I taught a week before mm -hmm. the weekend in the Word, and that's when I taught the box. And I taught union, oneness, and identity, and being the son. Mm -hmm. And the, I, the father was just revealing, continuing to reveal things to me on my walk. And I said, Father, stop. I can contain no more. And the father said, yes, you can, because you have the mind of the son. And when he said that to me, it cut through everything and it be became there was a revelation that the mystery can only be contained by the mind of the son it cannot be contained by mine in the flesh and that's why he said that yes you can because i was saying my mind can cannot contain this mystery and he said yes it can because you have the mind of the Son. You have the mind of Christ. And because of that, it can contain this new revelation. And the teaching tomorrow is called Old Wineskins, Living Outside the Identity of the Son. Mm, mm. And that's what he said. You have new wineskins. And it can contain the mystery the old identity cannot. The old mind cannot contain this. But the mystery, let me see, the mind of the son mm -hmm. can contain the mystery. Because the mind of the son is eternal. 
and everything is revealing to me right. was beyond the third dimension right. understanding of this mind. Because this mind sees everything in the dimension in which it is. It's what it contains. It is how it discerns. It is how it figures things out. It is how it analyzes. And the father said, that is not my mind. My mind is spiritual. Mm -hmm. And because you have the mind of Christ, you have the mind of the son, it can contain eternity. For it says, I have put eternity in the hearts of men that they will not understand what God has done from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I thought, what is he saying? And he did not say, I put eternity into the minds of men. I put eternity in the heart that they may seek it, but they would not understand it. Mm -hmm. And it can only be understood with the mind of the Son. Because when you have the mind of the Son, eternal things are now discernible, mm -hmm. are now understood. The fourth dimension is now able to be revealed, but it cannot be revealed right. in this mind until it becomes birthed a new person, a new creation, the Son of God. And then revelation just is revealed after revealed after revealed, and the mystery unfolds. And mm -hmm. David's going to say something. I was, I was, I was, I was looking for my, my Bible, but Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Man. Where he said, for these things in verse 14 or 13, for they are spiritually discerned. Verse 14 say, for the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit. I'm sorry, for the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit, for they are spiritually discerned. But he said before, uh, in verse 13, you got, you got that verse 13? 213? It's, yeah, it's 213. First Corinthians? First Corinthians, yeah. First Corinthians 213. 13. And it says, uh, which things we also speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. Wait, that's it. Which, which the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit teaches. Right. Which is what? Which is comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Right. But the natural man cannot understand the things of the Spirit because they are spiritually discerned. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's so, this brings us back to Mark's statement. People, because he goes on in the next verse and say, who knows the mind of the Lord? Yeah. That he might instruct him. For you have the mind of Christ. Now let me tell you this, and I'm going to go outside the reservations. We say we have the mind of Christ. That's true in union. Nope. Yeah. That's union. That's true in union. You have the mind of Christ. Remember, when you say that, there's a mind that you have plus the mind of Christ. There's two minds available. Who is this? And, and, and Jenny, and, and, well, I said I was going to agree with Jenny. Who, which, which is this, Lord? Is, is this me or is this you? That's, a two, that's two minds. So when Jenny said, Father, I'm tired of struggling with this. I need realization. She didn't say this, but I need realization. <laughs> what did he tell you? We have the same mind. Very clear. There is no two minds. There's only one. The Father and the Son are one. The mind of the Son is the same as the mind of the Father. The issue in this is where mind need to be renewed to who we are in Christ as the Son, birthed by our Father. So it's our Father teaching us who we are to Him. That's only one mind, not two. Not the mind. Sooner or later, we. He tells us that. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Yes, that's right. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4. I knew a man in Christ above 14, 15 years. 14 years. 14 years. Whether in the body I cannot tell, nor out of the body I cannot tell, the Lord knoweth. For if such a one was taken into the third heaven to what? See things, okay. See things which is unlawful for a man, that man he's talking about, him, right. for unlawful for a man to speak. 
Whether anybody I cannot tell, no other body I cannot tell, the Lord know it. So what is he saying to us? He said, I can't tell you everything I saw because the father told me he wants to let you know what it is himself. When that baby comes out of Amber, he has a name right now that he does not know. He's been given a name that's hidden from him. He has a name. He has a mind that has not yet been exercised to that identity of the name he's been given. But when he comes forth, his mind will match his name, which will match his identity. And he'll have the mind of the son. You know, it's one of those things that when you hear it, you know it. it, it, it it's unexplainable. I, I, there's times at night, and there are, they happen upon occasion, where I will be studying to teach, and I'll be... I'll be in that listening mode, mm-hmm. and the Father will begin to unfold eternity in things that are just, and I just, I, I just told the Father one night, I go, Father, that is simply profound. The way he explains it is simple, but it's so profound. And when, you, when the Father says something to you, it is clear and it is simple. And you can't understand why everybody can't see it. If that's correct. You cannot understand why everybody can't see it. You just can't understand it <laughs> because it is so simple. But in the simplicity, it is profound. And only the mind of the son mm-hmm. can discern it. Mm-hmm. And the father sometimes, it's just, it was, it was like one night I was sitting there and I was thinking about time. And he said, God does, I said, I do not exist in time. Time exists within me. And I thought, whoa, how do you even go there? (laughs) Does that one statement, time exists in me. I do not exist in time. And I thought, oh, what does it take to understand that? What does it take to unfold that mystery? Mm-hmm. And I thought that's profound. In one sentence, he opened up eternity in a way that could go f- for light years. Just one sentence. And he does that time and time again mm-hmm. to where he'll say something. And it's like, oh. I, if I could just bottle this moment so that I will forever be able to say it this way, and then poof, it's just kind of like gone. Not the, not the realization of it, but the way it was expressed to you mm-hmm. in your spirit is clear and it's sharp and it's so simple. What's left is the realization of what was said because the spirit deep spoke the deep Mm -hmm. and deep understood it and deep heard it and deep knows it and Mm -hmm. deep to my mind because we're deep here realizes and I can tell you what deep says to deep but just because I tell it to you right. doesn't mean I understand it. That's correct. It doesn't mean I realize it. That's because correct. one day I was walking in my backyard and I said, Father, and he goes, you don't realize it. That's, 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 that's. Now, Curtis said, let me, he said something I want to I want to draw your attention to. And some of you already know this. Some of you have been walking uh, in, in the spirit for a while. And maybe some of you haven't. But the bottom line, you know this. 
when the Father reveals something to you, the first thing that comes to your mind, why doesn't everybody see it? You ever have that? Why, why can't they see it? You said that to me the month, last month. How come, David, how come they don't see it? Because it's for you. If, if, uh-uh. if they don't it's get for this, you. if it's, they don't get this, how are they ever going to understand I am this? You're going into my message. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus said, uh, 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 and Nicodemus said, how can this be? He said, are you a teacher in Israel and you do not know this? Mm-hmm. For we say unto you that which we have seen and that which we have heard. Mm-hmm. So that's part of my message. Who's we is he talking about? Mm-hmm. But when, when, when people, when, the simple reason is because it's for you. What Curtis heard, it's for him. That means even if he spoke it to you, even if he speaks it. It, it rolls off your back like water. It, it does. Unless. He's preparing you for the same thing or something similar. Or the Spirit quickens it. Or the Spirit, right, or the Spirit quickens it. Now, remember, if he says it and it's real to him, well, he, it's been given to him and he speaks it, and the Spirit quickens it to you, then that seed falling on ground depends on your ground. Sometimes it falls on good ground. Sometimes it falls on ro- uh, uh, rocky ground. Sometimes it falls by the wayside. But, but the difference is, if it falls on ground that's been broken up and tilled, and that's what the Spirit goes before and does. And that, and, and I'm just going to throw this in. It's just a side note. That broken up ground and stuff, <clears throat> that's called hunger. Yeah, that's why I'm saying that hunger is what makes the difference. That, that hunger You're determines really what kind of ground it falls on. I'm also going to tell you that it's also crisis. If yeah, <laughs> oh, that's bone that is. <laughs> <laughs> There was a. I, I've, 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 Are you talking about the fellowship of his sufferings? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. He made the form of his death? Yeah. The fellowship of his suffering. Not yours. <laughs> right, 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 right. People confuse that. You know, and I'm going to tell you an Aggie joke. And 90% of you have heard this, but I'm going to say it again in case you forget. There's, I've been in a Texas A&M Aggie. There's, I heard an Aggie joke that really meant something spiritual to me years ago. That's tough to do that. It's tough. <laughs> It, it, take, it takes the mind of Christ, let me tell you what. <laughs> to hear an Aggie joke and make it spiritual. But the joke went like this. There were two Aggies in the biology lab, and they were dissecting grasshoppers. And they had to write down, the live grasshoppers, they had to write down the results. So they cut the two legs off, front legs off the grasshopper, and they poked the grasshopper and said, jump. And the grasshopper jumped two-thirds as far as first documented. They wrote it down in the notes. They cut off the second pair of legs and said, jump, grasshopper. And the jump hopper grabbed, jumped about a third as far. So they cut all the legs off the grasshopper, and they poked it, and they said, jump, grasshopper, jump. And it wouldn't move. And they wrote down, the grasshopper goes deaf when all the legs are cut off. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you what. <laughs> we don't hear without crisis. That's right. Sometimes that's true. When things are going well, we don't hear. If you think you do, just go out and speak this message to someone whose life is just in cruise control, going 70 miles an hour. They don't hear a word you're saying. That same person, a year from now, two years from now, when crisis has hit, the ground is fertile, and that all of a sudden they start listening. People go deaf when things are good. You start putting them in crisis, and they listen. That's right. That's true. And we'll talk about this tomorrow. You get that diagnosis of cancer. You get that diagnosis of some disease. How about this? You get the coronavirus. Fear slaps you where you don't want to be slapped. What about this? Plane went down and somebody you love is on it. House blew up. Somebody you love was in it. How about this? It's even worse. Your child is diagnosed with cancer. And he's 12 years old. 
and you, life is not the same anymore. Helplessness immediately comes on. Helplessness immediately comes in. But you know what door it enters? What door does hopelessness enter into? What's the door that lets it in? Fear. Say it again. Fear. When fear comes in, it brings other things with it. Hopelessness, helplessness, <clears throat> forgetfulness, <clears throat> joy no longer exists. When fear comes in, hopelessness, helplessness, incompatibility, you name it, it comes in with it. In some cases, anger comes in with it. You're angry at God. You're angry at others. You're angry. When fear comes in, the door is open for everything to rush in, and all of it rushes in your mind. When that child is there, what can you want? You want you angry because fear says my child is going to die. Yeah, I mean, let me ask you this. Most of y'all know this answer because I taught it. But what is the number of God, Dwight? One. Let me tell you what the number of God is. Nine one one. <laughs> that's the number of God. Because that's the first thing we dial when crisis happens. We go, the, the number of God is 911. Got to get in touch with him. I, gotta, I, got, I got to get in touch with God because crisis has happened. And let me tell you what, when you dial 911, you're going to listen. We got to go to church. We got to get back in church. How many times you heard that? We got to get back in church. We got to put Jesus first. We got to put God first. How many times you heard that? You heard that? Why do you think you hear that? Crisis. But do you know what God really listens for? He hears the crisis, the 911 calls. But do you know what God really hears? Is when you sit in church and you say, there's got to be more. That's right. Been that, done that, got the t-shirt to prove it. There's got to be more. Right. When you're sitting there and it's not crisis, but you say there's got to be more because this is empty. Yeah. And that's when he says, I've got something to reveal to you. That's when identity is revealed to you. Because at that point, it's not crisis that calls. It's the hungry son who says, Father, I want more. And he hears that. Mm -hmm. That's not what we're saying in the church today. We're saying, I've got enough. Mm -hmm. But the father wants to hear his children. And you know what? You're going to start hearing it. Because when their identities fail. Their personal identity fail. When their personal identities fail. And they will fail. That's correct. There will be, there's got to be more coming from the mouths of his children. Even, I'll go even further. Even from the mouths of those who are unsaved. Do you know why teenagers commit suicide more than anything else? Hopelessness. Huh? Hopelessness. Okay, that's a result. Hopelessness is a result. But teenagers commit suicide for one reason. Their personal identities have failed. And they become hopeless. You see, once your personal identity fails, then hopelessness takes over. And so the only way out is to end the personal identity that's causing the pain. Well, there's a lot of fear in there, too, because they don't know what's going to be in the future. I don't know how I'm going to handle it. You know, all that. A, a, a trick. All of that is part of the same personal identity. Who they are in the flesh, who they are to themselves is failing. And there's no other way. The only way out is to end it. There's, there's no desperation. Right the and you understand? Well, I'm sorry. It's murder suicide. It's right at the bottom of the list of fear. Your, your murder suicide is on that fear list. That's correct. Right down the bottom. But you know what that proves? You know what happens when somebody does that? Let me tell you what that proves. That proves, one, that everything in this world is absolute. So you might not believe in gravity, but a young person that commits suicide 
who hangs themselves or jumps off a bridge, they know that they, they are depending on absolute. Mm -hmm. They're depending that when I jump, I'm going to end it. When I kick this bucket up, I'm going to end it. They are proving everything in this world is absolute. Truth is absolute. They're proving that down motivation is at work. That may be hard for some people if you lost somebody. But they are not thinking about anything else but their personal identity failed and they want to end it. Well, how do you want to end it unless you know what you're doing is going to accomplish it? Personal identity, that's been a word that we've been given, we've been talking about for months. Personal identity in the flesh must end. That our personal identity in the spirit can be realized. So, it's what tomorrow is all about. If you yeah. like tonight, you're going to love tomorrow. Let me, let me go. Pete, you got anything you want to add <clears throat> or say to this, brother? Well, um, you touched on a couple of things that, you know, Father's been working with me lately um, with regards to fear. Mm. Uh, and it's all over the world. You, you know, you said that coronavirus. Um, I, up here, they're closing schools. You know, the, the sports teams are not playing. And um, it's all a big thing of fear. And... When we're not walking in the spirit, you know, Father's showing me when we're not walking in the spirit, um, it's very easy to get caught up. People are people are delusional. Yes, they are. I mean, uh, I'm, I, and I'm not talking about some people. I'm talking about the great majority of people are, are delusional in their fear. And it's a thing of where the enemy's got us tricked where you have to do something. Um, he gave me the verse... Give me the verse that, um, and I'm going to paraphrase. I'm going to, um, it's, it's in Galatians. It, um, I'm going to read it first and then paraphrase it. Um, uh, uh, but God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision availeth anything but a new creature. Mm -hmm. Well, in circumcision, whatever we do in the flesh, nor uncircumcision, whatever we don't do in the flesh. Right. Our world today, we're so hardened to where people are, are taught. Oh, we had a conversation earlier in the week about making a difference. You know, right. people want to make a difference in the world. We can right. change the world. And and that's not a, out of a bad heart. It's not out of a bad thing. But but it's it, it's not going to happen in our in our flesh. And and people, you know, we, we're so into that you mm -hmm. know where you know we have to do this what happens we you know we worry about what's going to happen around the corner people are hoarding the stores they're going <laughs> I, i'm not kidding you you go into the you go into the stores you can't find toilet paper you can't find bottled water <laughs> and how many my, people have died my son-in-law did that today <laughs> how, how, how many people i seriously and and I, I, Father is, is just teaching me a patience in this and looking because because I, I I'm not going to go much more deeper into that. But um, as as far as um, you know, just you know that that's where I'm at in my journey in sonship in my in my in my sonship learning. The, uh, I want to just kind of piggyback on what you said. Uh, you talked about fear all over the world, right? Why? why? Why is there fear and panic in coronavirus? Let me, let me help you. You want to read that? Yeah, we're not trusting you. Uh, Hebrews 2, 14 and 15. For as much then as uh, the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part in the same. Now you know who's he in that verse, right? That's Christ. Yeah. Jesus. Before the cross, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Keep going. And deliver them who through fear of death 
were all their former life subject to bondage, the lifetime. To deliver them for to deliver them who had the power of death, that is the devil, right. who their whole life was afraid of death. Yes. Subject to bondage. Which made them subject to bondage. You know why coronavirus today <clears throat> is all over the world and there's so much fear? It is what it does into the mind. Not necessarily what it does to the body. Everybody gets it, doesn't die. But the idea of death makes the panic. They're still subject to death. <clears throat> death of what? Personal identity in the flesh. See that, Jackie? Yeah, exactly. And they never consulted the Father. No slash. No what? They most likely have not consulted the Father about any of it. No, they, they probably have. They just all on their own. Well, I've got to do this. I. Didn't know. I. <laughs> run. Yeah, we need, we need to run to Costco. A lady told me today <coughs> when we were in the thing, they had put security guards in Costco today. Mm -hmm. Security guards. Oh, yeah. Why were they there to protect? I mean, were they so they didn't buy all of them. So people didn't buy all of everything. <laughs> Well, I'm going to not take them all. Without them. <laughs> Martin told me when he was in, in Sam's today, he got a picture uh, uh, in Sam's where the line in Sam's. I was there. I, I saw it. <laughs> Every one of them had, had four or five bottles of water and two or three toilet papers. And I mean, they were all had the same brand. But what, now think about what that does. Think about what that does. They load down with toilet paper and, 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 and paper towels. And somebody said, what are they going to eat? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what are you going to eat? No food, just toilet paper. And <laughs> As if that's going to solve their problem. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. Uh, Nicole, you want to finish this up? You got anything to say as we finish, babe? Uh, not, not too much. Just basically really agreeing with everything that you guys are saying because I'm uh, realizing so much, so much of that in my life. You know, so I'm just... You know, it's great to be on the understanding with other people, even though you're on the other side of the world. Um, yeah, we're on, we on, we on, we on the upside. You're on the downside. Yeah. <laughs> we're down under with no toilet paper. You, <laughs> you are living down motivation. <laughs> yes, definitely. So, yeah, and, and it's just, you know, Jaden, my son, has been praying every night, oh, Lord, please just take away the coronavirus end it now and I said to him no we need to pray that this is a pusher toward Christ and knowing who you are so now he's changed his prayer and he's praying more of that which is good good um yeah just you know when you know begin to know and have realization you are at peace a mm. deep peace um there are definitely daily things that you go through that hurt and you know you don't like but there's a deep definite deep peace in my heart yeah the father put it to me this way when i asked him he said it is not a question whether you go or whether you stay it is a question it it it, it, it is about obedience you stay when i tell you to stay you go when i tell you to go he said the children of israel stopped and moved and they did so at my command it wasn't about camping. It wasn't about moving. It was about obedience. They moved with the cloud. And he said to me, it is not about whether you stay or whether you go. Mm -hmm. It is about obedience. You stay when I tell you to stay, and you go when I tell you to go. It's no pat answer. It is obedience. Obedience and believe were the same words in the Greek and also the Hebrew. Unbelief. <coughs> And disobedience, same word, Greek and Hebrew. So if you say you believe, pistos, yes, if you say you believe, then you are obeyed. You're obedient. Jesus learned, you know, he learned obedience, obedience by the by things, things he, he suffered. Mm -hmm. But he was he, he trusted the Father all and everything. So what do you have to learn? What? <laughs> learn Romans, Romans five and eight. He cried out to him who could save him with much crying and, 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 and pleading. Though he were the son, 
yet learned he obedience by the things he suffered. What did he have to learn? He had to learn to be a man in the flesh, or, or the son in the flesh, that, that he, it was put upon him when he said, I'll go and, and be their, 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 uh, their light. And so he, he, had to, he had to learn obedience in the flesh the same way that we have to learn obedience in, in the, the spirit. spirit. That's correct. That's, 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 that's good. That's excellent. That's Hebrews so well 5, said. 5, 8. Yeah, but I say that you behind. Yeah. Well, and, and the thing about it is, think about all the suffering he did with the Pharisees and everything else, and the, you know all the things he suffered. I mean, not only on the cross, but just correct all throughout his ministry. But he was going to be faithful to the Father. No matter. Well, I'm getting into my message the bar, so I'll okay. Do that one. <laughs> okay. Mark, if you got anything else to say, brother, we we we're gonna unless you got something else to say, we're gonna take off. Okay. No, I'm all good. I love hearing what you guys have to say, what the Father's doing. It's the greatest time of my life. <laughs> so tomorrow morning, guys, at 1030, we start. I don't know what, that's, what time that's going to be for you guys in Australia. Yeah, we won't be able to make that one, Dave. Okay. It's all right. 3, 3 a.m. in the morning. Oh, really? Yeah, they're not Woo, we. Yeah. <laughs> We tried it once and we suffered. <laughs> I, I I might be able to because I'm not working tomorrow. So. Oh, okay. We get we get to see our sister. <laughs> our brother has to work I, tomorrow. I'll have I'll have to have an afternoon nap though. <laughs> okay, well you take your nap and we 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 we, 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 we we'll wait on you. All right. Okay. Brenda. She's on she's there. She's on oh, Brenda, you're here. Yeah. Oh, well, so you got anything you want to add to this, sister, before we uh, we we wait on you? What you got to say? She's muted right now. You, you unmuted her? I can do it if she wants me to. I'll unmute her. Okay. Nope, she's muted. She's muted. Tell your sister to let go of the mute button. <laughs> Scripture can be interpreted like this. I no longer <coughs> live, but it is the anointing that lives in me. See. Well, the anointing, the anointed one makes you, uh, 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 makes you anointed. <coughs> but the word anointed also means holy one. Holy one. Holy one, uh, uh, Hagias. Yeah, Hagias. Hagias. It means anointed. It means holy one. So, it, when you become, when we become born again, Brenda, God puts Christ in us. All of who He is in spirit goes into our spirit, and those two spirits become one new spirit, and that is the anointing. We have, we are the holy one. We have all this oh, oh, there she is. <laughs> She's like, oh, she she like, oh. <laughs> who is that? She probably doesn't have her new off. Unmute yourself. Uh, she doesn't have her microphone on. She's, oh. she's in two sessions, right? Well, she just dropped one. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. But she doesn't have a microphone. <laughs> oh. Oh, she doesn't have a microphone. It's good to see her. Mm -hmm. Well, I, uh, yeah, well. Then we can read her lips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she just enabled her mic. Okay. It's still muted. Still okay. muted? No, nope, oh, not muted. Else? There's somebody over there with her. She's not muted anymore. She's not muted? No. Oh. There you go. There you go. We can hear you now. Yes. Oh, you guys can hear me now? Yeah. I have to get off my computer and get on my. Uh, phone. So, okay. God, she looks like a uh, sister. But what did you ask? I, I just, did you say, did I have anything to add? Yes, dear. Oh, no. I was just telling Patricia, um, I text her, you know. Yeah, I know. She told us. Yeah. He said, you know, the mind of Christ. And the thing I'm always um, expressing is 
that scripture where he says, I pray that they will know that they are one with you just like I am. That's my John, John 17. Yes. I pray that they will know that they are one with you just like I am, you know? So yeah, that, that's, that's, Final answer. Final answer. Do you want to call a friend? You know what? <laughs> Do you want to call a friend? You know what? <laughs> no, I, I I don't need a lifeline. I got the lifeline. Okay. Oh, wow, wow. Just, you, you got you got you got a lifeline, so you might want to call a friend. Okay. Yeah. You got you got your sister. She can she can answer it for you. Oh yeah, yeah. But I'm good. Okay. Well, with that said, thank you, uh, uh, Brenda, for joining us this evening. Thank you, Nicole and, and Pete. We trust you guys join us tomorrow. We're starting 10.30 our time. So, Pete, that's you and I on the team. Uh, that would be 8.30 for you, Yep, Brenda. Uh, we got teaching tomorrow. So you're going to hear several speakers, Dwight being one, Curtis being one, and uh, David Griffin being another. If I, if I can help it, I won't speak tomorrow. <laughs> I'll wait. I'll let these brothers talk to you. I, I don't need to talk. I say enough as it is, so these brothers can talk. Uh, each one of them got two sessions to, to go, so I'm good with that. So if you guys would like to join us, uh, Nicole, get your nap in, baby. Okay, get your nap, because Curtis got something to say and Dwight got something to say, so I want to hear what they have to say. With that said, and we're going to hear from some of our guests, we're going to hear from Monica, and we're going to hear from uh, Lopez, and of course our dear brother Jimmy. Oh, maybe. Yeah, he told me the other day, he was asking the father, what was he going to say? And uh, he said, he hadn't given me anything. I said, well, remember what, what happened in, in, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 29? <clears throat> verse, no, verse 22, 20 and 22. Think not what you're to say, for when the time comes, the father will give you what to say, and it won't be you speaking, but your father in you speaking. That's, that's good, brother. At least you hear it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, thank you, Sister Gray. Thank you, Brother uh, Pappas. Thank you, Sister Hoff. With that said, we're going to sign off. Thank you guys for joining us for our first night of the conference, uh, Sonship and Identity Conference in 2020. Tomorrow, Lord willing. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Okay, that's food in there, baby. Oh, get your plate. No, I need. Okay. You know, you put the water in the food color.